All right, so um, I have these data files on my computer, so you guys can <laughs> follow along. <laughs> you just won't have the data set. But I did create a, a Dropbox that has all of these files, and it has an initial copy of this little R script that I'm working off of. And um, now that we've added and modified some things during the class here, I'll save it again and put it out there. So I'm going to start building a repository for this stuff out on Dropbox as well. That way there, if you forget something or you get home, it's like, oh, great, where'd that file go? Or you accidentally delete it off your computer. <laughs> uh, there'll be a backup there on Dropbox. So, And um, that handout with the flyer, the, the full length is also there on the bottom of that flyer. And um, if I could get the little electronic book up, there's a link in the book as well. So, OK. So there's a bunch of different ways um, there's some stuff that's automatically built into R, and I'm going to just move this over so you can see the whole thing. These three commands, read table, read CSV, and read the limb, are all built into the base package of R. So the wonderful thing about this is, if you're working especially in and out of Excel, this is true for both SAS and SPSS, a lot of people now, and actually a lot of lab software, so if you're getting data from, let's say, cortisol files, you know, that kind of thing, a lot of times they'll send it to you in either Excel or CSV. And CSV is kind of now like almost the de facto standard for moving data between all kinds of platforms and software packages because it's a very simple comma delimited format. Um, so let me pull up the file so you guys can see what it looks like. And I have this in a slightly different directory. Oh no, we're going to put it. Do sets. Okay. So my computer's set up by default to open a CSV file in Excel. That's why it has a little Excel icon. But that really is just a comma delimited format. So I can actually open this in Notepad, so a basic text editor. So if I have Notepad open here, I'm actually going to take this file and drag it over. And what you'll notice here is every single value is separated by a comma. So the first column right now, it, it has double quotes there. There's nothing in it. That's actually a row identifier. I just left it in. But then that, that first big thing is subject ID. So just numbers 1 to 20. Um, age is like 45, 50, 35. Weight, this is weight in pounds. Um, so 150, 167, and so forth. So those of you that have ever done my little intro to working with data, and I do this with my 736 class, this is out on Dropbox too. Um, this is a little handout that gets people going in SPSS. So I'm replicating this exercise in R for this class. And so, you know, here's the information. It's going to have 20 um, subjects and has some data here on age, weight, height, gender, socioeconomic status. There's some more information. This is getting it set up in R, but there's basically the data set. And so what I've done is I've put this out there in a couple of different formats, and we're going to read that into and out of R. So all of this is working. It's just the network's not up yet. <laughs> Maybe it'll pop up before we finish. <laughs> all right, so this is the little data set that I'm going to have you guys work with. And all of this is on Dropbox as well. So any questions on that? Um, there's another file format that sometimes you'll see. So I created one here called dataset1tab.txt. So it's a text file, but instead of using a comma as the delimiter, I've used a tab. So every, every entry in each row, the value is separated by a tab. So that tabulation character. It's a little hard to see this. Actually, if I open this in Microsoft Word, there's a way in Word to turn on all the non-printing characters. You would actually see the character for the tab inside Microsoft Word. Um, you can use spaces. I think there's some other delimiters out there. But comma and tab are probably the two most common that you'll see. Yeah. Mm -mm. Mm -hmm. And you can have something that's even funky because you can go in and define the delimiters. So if you were getting something off of 
another proprietary type system and it used a different kind of delimiter. It's unusual to see really many wide ranging things, but there might be some old legacy stuff that would show up. Um, and there's even some comments here. So like if I show you guys in, I know in the help menu sometimes it's a little hard to see, but if we look at read.table, it explains these files here in the help. So read.table is one of the most generic, where you give it like a file, you tell it whether you have a header or not, what the separator is, and then there's a whole bunch of other stuff. So like, suppose you had something um, that was pretty complicated and you knew you were going to go pull this from a file, but there was like 10 lines of header information or something which sometimes I get that from the different labs. Like there'll be information about this is the assay that was run, this is the person who ran the assay, this is the date, this is information perhaps on the calibration of the instrument for that day. So sometimes that file that you get when they do your lab analyses may have 10 or 20 lines of header information and you would really like to strip that out. So rather than going through and opening up every file <laughs> and saying okay we're going to delete the first 20 lines and resave the file instead of doing that you can actually just tell R no it has this is how much header just skip all of that start on line such and such anyway there's all kinds of ways to sort of customize that process um, but within that there's these two CSV readers that the CSV2 and the Delim2 these two are designed to be more income um, compatible with sort of European systems, places where a comma is used instead of a decimal. So there's some ways to, to fix that. So if you're getting data in a different kind of format. Um, and then the delimiter here, this is the one I'm going to use for the tab. So you notice the separator, whoops, it says, was it backslash T, which that's the symbol for indicating there's a tab. So it's a sp that's how tabs are shown as backslash t. So then these commands here all basically do the same thing. So if I read in this table, I give it the file name. This is where it is on my computer. Yours will be slightly different once you download it. It does have a header. I have one line of header information that has the variable names in it. And then my separator is the comma. So if I do that and then look at data RT, print it out. I could print it out to the console. So there it is. Um, I can do the same thing with this r.csv. And the nice thing about this is it assumes I have a header and my separator is a comma. So basically this .csv um, import, I can leave that part off of the command. So this is just like, this is like a custom version of read table. So I get the same information. Huh? Yeah, so read.csv <laughs> is basically a customized version of read table. And then the delimiter file here, um, the default in this one, instead of the separator being a comma, the default is a separator is a tab. So since these two are the most common, the CSV just goes ahead and assumes it's a comma delimited. The delim assumes it's tab delimited. Why they didn't call it tab, I don't know. So all three of these do exactly the same thing. So these data sets here that I created, they're all 20 observations, eight variables. Yeah. Sure. Sort of. So um, no, no, it's a good question. So with REDCap, um, right now, REDCap is designed, and you go through that export window, and you can say data export. You can export out to SPSS, SAS, Excel, R. What's the other one? Can you go to Stata? Yeah, I couldn't remember if they had added that yet. So you still sort of have to go through this two-step process where you export out to the format and software package of your choice and then import that data into um, the software that you're using. That said, there is an API for REDCap, which stands for Applied Programming Interface. 
I've talked to Megan Turk about it. They have not turned it on because OIT does not want everybody hitting red cap continuously. Right now, they, they don't have the server capacity to support it, bottom line. But on a limited basis, I've talked to Megan about trying to see if we can figure out how to do that because I've, I've downloaded the instructions. I understand how the API works. So if I have permission to log into your database and I've got the information on the API, I could be inside of R using that API interface with all the right permissions, log in and on the fly, pull data out of REDCap, run a script in R and write a report. But all of those pieces right now that it's not quite enterprise level, I want to run it as a proof of concept and kind of work with OIT on that. But I just don't, I don't know what their plans are to maybe scale up and support that. They might do it on a limited basis for certain projects. We still have to go through this export and then import. No, I'm going to show you guys how to read Excel here in just one minute. Um, but yeah, from REDCap, you can go to all those different things and then from there bring it in. So. Mm -hmm. No. You can read these native formats. I just mentioned CSV is the easiest place to start because it's like one of the lowest level formats that are cross-platform compatible. Right. Yeah, it went, I guess about two years ago when the P30 got awarded and we were buying software and stuff, um, one of the pieces of software that Brian suggested we buy was something called Stat Transfer, I think, which at that time... Yep, it's it was designed to basically convert between say SAS, the SAS seven B DAT to SPSS. Anyway, it would do that for you. Now most of the software packages can read each other. I mean it's like how many people remember the days of WordPerfect? Did you ever have to move back and forth between Microsoft Word and WordPerfect? Okay. Does WordPerfect even exist anymore? <laughs> Other than on my dad's computer. <laughs> Um, I'll have to tell him I said that today. He'll laugh. Anyway, um, okay, so to read from Excel, there's this package called Read Excel. And I will warn you, and I'm, I, I figured this out last night because I tried two or three other packages and I kept having problems. Um, so there are several packages out there for reading Excel. If anybody's ever played with this before, um, there's a couple others and like one was requiring me to download and update my Java, so I gave up on that one. And then there's another package that was out there, but I had to install Perl, so I left that one alone. And I kept looking, and I finally found this one. So this one's actually written by Hadley Wickham, the um, chief scientist there at our studio. So it's it's awesome. It doesn't require any additional stuff; <laughs> it just works, and it's pretty straightforward. So for this one to work on your system, I already have it installed, but you would need to go through and install, and this isn't going to work because I'm not online, but you would have to go through and install the Read Excel package. So I'll just make a little note here. Note, you need to install the Read Excel package first, and that command is install packages and then you would put in quotes and I wish they would standardize this but when you call the install packages command you have to put the package name in quotes but when you use library to load it into memory you don't need the quotes so and I always and if I haven't done R in a while <laughs> I always forget this and half the time I have the quotes in the wrong place um, but once we're back online you should be able to install this package I installed it last night so I've already got it on my system um, so you load that into the library and let me pull up the help viewer so you can see what read Excel looks like so if I type in read Excel um, Did I type the right thing? Oh, it's still loading. Sorry, I didn't realize it was trying to do something. All right. Well, we'll give it a minute. <laughs> it's obviously trying to do something. Yes. 
Yeah, so R can't read Excel natively. So while this is doing whatever it's doing, I'm not sure why it's hung. Um, but you load this library, and then you have access to these read Excel commands. Um, the foreign library is where you can get to where you can read SPSS, Stata. Uh, there's an export format that I know the CDC uses for exporting things in and out of um, SAS. Okay. <coughs> Cannot open URL. Right, we'll see what happens. We'll see if this works. <laughs> um, okay. So in Read Excel, um, you give it the name of the file. You can actually specify. This is kind of nice. So, so say you've got a data set that has multiple sheets. You can come in and specify the sheet name or the sheet number. Um, you can also do sub-selection. So suppose you get this big thing and you really only want to read in the, you know, the first so many columns. There's ways to do that and sort of, sort of subset it before you even bring it into R. Um, so this first one, and I went ahead, this supports both XLS and XLSX <laughs> files. So the 97 to 2003 format, and then the later formats, 2007, 2010, 2013, all those versions of um, Microsoft Office. So if I read this in, here you go. And I'll talk more about missing data later. Um, in this one, it reads it in, it gives it a value of NA. So there actually is a couple of missing values in this data set. And then it'll also work for the, the newer XLSX format. That's really hard to say fast. So, and then, and it brings everything in. And so those, that first row, these are now my variable names. And this is the serm, pretty much the same process you go through with bringing data into SPSS as well. So if you see an error when uploaded, can you get it? Mm-hmm. You can. Oh, I must be slowly getting <laughs> getting networking back. It's trying to make me log into box. Okay. Yeah, it's read underscore Excel. Mm-hmm. So since I loaded, yeah, so the package that I loaded was read Excel, which is down here. And in the packages window, um, you can actually scroll down and all the packages that are like in on your system <coughs> will show up here. If it has a, a check mark next to it, that means it's loaded in memory. So I like, there's something here called RCPP that I was mentioning to you. So you could interface R and C++ code. Um, I don't have it loaded, but I could read about it. So all these things are hyperlinked. Um, and if I click on read Excel, this tells me here's the documentation. It's really simple. There's only two functions in it. One is read Excel, and then there's this Excel sheets. So if I wanted to list all the stuff that was in a given Excel file and list all the sheets, this is. Right, yeah, the, everybody uses slightly different things. So this next package is foreign. So let me load that one because the last one I loaded like that all right <laughs> so um, let me open the help on that one so you guys can see what foreign looks like so here's what foreign looks like <coughs> I mainly use this for reading SPSS but it'll read an S binary file it reads SciStat anybody in here ever use SciStat SciStat I used it really briefly in graduate school um, there's that SAS export format and I point that out because the CDC uses this so and other public health data sets use this um, there's epi info anybody in here ever used epi info I played with it a little bit um, there's database formats or some other stuff I've never done there's octave which is I think the freeware version of MATLAB um, Minitab anyway so this is a pretty powerful package for reading lots of different data formats. Um, but to do SPSS, here's what the command looks like. So let me scroll it out so you can see. Um, and this takes a little bit of getting used to. So I, I give it the file name. And then there's an option here that I set to data frame because I want to make sure that it comes in as a data frame. So SPSS has a ton of information. So one of the things I love about SPSS is the code book. But that's a lot of overhead. Think about it. Because for every variable, I have the variable name. I have a label. 
I have the type of variable. I have like how many digits, you know, it's displaying in. I have, you know, if, you know, the, the codes like one is male, two is female. Maybe I have missing data and it gives me the missing data codes. You know, 99 is missing, 77 is refused to answer. Um, so there's a whole ton of stuff that comes over with it. But by forcing it into a data frame, it makes it nice and clean and it's more or less what I'm expecting. Um, and I'll try to put more stuff out there because you could spend all day fixing these things. Um, so here's what it looks like when we read it in from SPSS. There you go. So each of these look a little different. All right, so that's one way to get data into R. So now that we've got data in there, let's do something with it. All right, so um, from here, let's work with the data.csv file that we created. So, because I've now basically got the data set read in like 18 different times. It, now would probably be a good time to stop and like clean up my environment, but I'm not going to mess with it right now because I basically have the same data set in here one, two, three, four, five, six different times. <laughs> um, so the data.csv, here's what it looks like. So we got eight variables, 20 cases. And in this data set, I don't know if I left open the Microsoft Word document. Um, one of the things I have the, the students do when I do this little exercise is that since I have weights and heights, we're going to calculate BMI. So I've, on purpose, the weights are in here in pounds. Height is in, um, actually height is in here as decimal feet. And I have them convert it to inches. So we have to multiply by 12. And then you take square of that. That's sort of on the bottom. And then on top, to do that conversion between pounds and kilograms, you put in that correction factor 703. So that formula then will get us to where we can calculate BMI. So this is what the commands look like for doing it in SPSS. So let's do it here in R. So here are those equations and I'm using that little dollar sign um, selector. But in this case what I'm doing is in there, I'm pulling out weight pre, multiplying by 703, then I'm pulling out height, multiplying by 12, and then squaring it. So that function then, I'm saying put that in an object back in the original data frame, data.csv, and I'm going to put it into a new variable called BMI pre. So in, in a way, even though it's a selector, I'm selecting a new variable yet to be named <laughs> because it's calculating it. And watch what happens when I run this command. So right now, data.csv says 20 observations, 8 variables. As soon as I run this and create a new variable, this should change from an 8 to a 9. Ta-da! It did. I didn't get any errors. So now I can open this up and take a look. And um, you'll notice, and I'm going to fix this in a minute, notice there's one value that the BMI is 166. It's because there's a typo in height. So height here, I had somebody that was only 2.6 decimal feet high. So it turns out that's a typo. It's supposed to be 5.6. Um, they're not like an amputee or something. Um, but be aware of that. We actually did have a study a couple of years ago where we had an amputee and I had this whole conversation. I'm like, how do I calculate their BMI? <laughs> so anyway. So since we had data here for how much people weighed at the beginning and the end, we're going to do this analysis again and run it for post. Yes, there's probably a more efficient way to do this where I could set it up and say, run the same formula across all these time points. We'll come back to that later. But for right now, we just had two. So I've created now a BMI for pre and post. So I now have 10 variables. Let's save it. So yes, question? You do. So I'm going to, let me show you something really, a little, a little cheat. And I hesitate to show you this because it, it often is abused. So there are two functions called attach and detach.
So if you know going in, you've got a set of analyses and you're only going to be working with this data frame. And you don't want to have to type data frame, string, variable name. It's just going to drive you crazy. Um, so if I come in here and I attach this, what it does is it attaches it to, I don't know the exact formal, it, it's basically now cached in memory. That's the easiest way for me to sort of describe it. Now I don't have to um, put in the data frame name because it's going to assume any variable or object that I type from this point forward is in this data frame. So if I'm trying and heaven forbid I've got two data frames with the same variable in it, that, that, that's why doing this can get kind of dangerous. But anyway, if you've only got one, it's not that big a deal. Suppose I wanted to calculate the difference from their BMI, let's say how much they weighed at the end and what their BMI was at the beginning. So I could actually calculate the difference, just BMI post minus BMI pre, and run that. A couple of things happen. One, I've actually calculated this difference, but notice difference is now just out here as an object by itself. It's no longer attached to the data frame. I could add it, but it's now just sort of floating out there. But maybe I'm not, you know, I don't really care, and maybe I want to look at, you know, calculating the mean of that difference. So there's, there's the average change in BMI. Um, and this is really good if you know you're just going to be doing a whole bunch of stuff just on that one data frame. So, um, but for the rest of what we're doing, I'm going to go ahead and detach it. Um, so there's pros and cons to this. Um, just be aware that it's really easy if you've attached something, then all of a sudden you can't remember where things went. <laughs> so it's kind of like an SPSS or, you know, if you have multiple data files open, sometimes you get lost as to, okay, this is really interesting output. Which data file did this come from? Yeah. <laughs> Maybe. Yeah, I mean, you can go in and, and rename it. Yeah, so you could easily, you could rename it or change it, yeah. Can you so how could we add this new into So I'm thinking, because now I have diff and it's in my global environment, I should be able to just say data CSV string diff. I just tell it, take that difference variable, now append it to the end, run it. Now I have 11 variables. So here's the pre, the post, and the difference. Good question. All right, and then we could go through and save this data out. I won't go through all of these, but um, these are the different commands. So data.csv just saves it out as a, um, I'm sorry, the save command, my bad. Um, you can save it out as our data. Write.csv saves it out as a comma delimited. And then there's a write.table that'll save it out as a tab delimited. So for all of the read ins, there's equivalent write out commands. So I'm just going to leave those there.